people are reporting dramatic effects from BPC-157 in terms of injury healing and performance enhancement, so should you start taking it? Well, let's have a look at what the scientific evidence says. Many have heard of BPC-157 through influencers like Joe Rogan or Andrew Huberman. I had a, a tendonitis in my elbow that I just could not fix. Yeah. I started using BPC-157, it was gone in two weeks. Yeah. And we see some medical clinics recommending it for muscle strength and endurance. So what actually is BPC-157 and does the research support the hype? Well, BPC-157 is a peptide, which is a short chain of amino acids. Peptides play important roles in our bodies. Some examples you've probably heard about include insulin, which regulates our blood sugar, and oxytocin, which is a hormone that helps us bond with others. BPC-157, which stands for Body Protection Compound 157, is a synthetic peptide derived from a natural protein found in the stomach acid. Synthetic forms of insulin, for instance, they've been used for decades and they've done a tremendous amount of good. When it comes to BPC-157, the most exciting claims are that it can dramatically speed up healing and the tissue repair process. So let's turn to the research to see what we know so far. BPC-517 was first described and isolated in the early 1990s. Researchers at a university in Croatia found it played a critical role in protecting and healing the stomach. They conducted a flurry of initial tests and they concluded that it had a range of healing properties across numerous organs in rats, mice, chicken and other animals. The results seemed so exciting that they even proposed that BPC-157 might be the first of a new class of drugs that could protect our body from damage. But there were lots of questions to explore. Would these initial results be repeatable? In what kind of contexts was it helpful? And how exactly did BPC-157 work? As far as contexts, much of the research has focused on the digestive tract. In one rat study, for instance, BPC-157 was found to effectively treat ulcers. But its healing effects were also explored in another critical area, tendons. Tendon injuries are difficult to heal and they require much longer recoveries than injuries to other kinds of tissues. Part of the reason is that there's very little blood supply to tendons and many resources for healing are delivered via the blood. So it's significant that tests of BPC-157 found it was able to powerfully improve the healing of the injury to the Achilles heel of rats. It effectively restored its function and structure. Another study found that BPC-157 was even able to accelerate wound healing of the skin. So the evidence suggests that the healing potential goes way beyond the stomach. But what is the mechanism? How exactly does it help? Well, so far, it appears that several things are going on at once. For one thing, BPC-157 reduces inflammation. In one experiment, pepper was used to irritate the sensitive tissue in the rat nose. Now, ordinarily, this triggers an inflammatory response, but applying BPC-157 ahead of time reduced this response. The more they used, the greater the reduction. Let's pause for a minute to explain the significance of this. What is inflammation and why would we want to reduce it? Inflammation is a complex response that helps to clean up damaged tissue and signal to the body to send healing factors to the injury site and fight potential infection. It's necessary, but excessive inflammation or inflammation that goes on too long can cause problems. It increases pain and it can damage healthy tissue, leading to scarring. So we often want to get inflammation under control so that it doesn't get out of hand. The right amount of inflammation promotes healing. Another central element of tissue healing and rebuilding is the formation of new blood vessels. This is called angiogenesis. And as we've already mentioned, much of what's needed for healing is carried in the blood, so adequate blood flow is critical. Several rat studies have isolated the stimulation of angiogenesis as one of the key ways that BPC-157 aids healing. In one experiment, for instance, BPC-157 was applied to crushed and cut muscles and tendons. It appeared to regulate a key growth factor for blood vessel growth. This helped the blood vessels form as they should, which sped up healing. In addition to reducing inflammation and promoting angiogenesis, BPC-157 it also seems to play a critical role in influencing the nitric oxide system. Nitric oxide acts as a signaling molecule that regulates blood flow and the immune response. Both of these are important for healing. Now, all of this sounds amazing, that there's a natural peptide found in our stomachs that seems to be able to promote healing throughout the body by controlling inflammation, spurring on new blood vessel formation, and regulating blood flow as well as the immune response. But there's one glaring problem. All of this research so far has been done in animals. To date, there have been no randomized clinical trials on the effects of BPC-157 in humans. There has just been one study involving humans. 
Researchers investigated the effects of BPC-157 in reducing knee pain, but the study has several limitations. First, it was retrospective, which means that the researchers asked patients about their experience after they had been treated. In this case, the patients were interviewed six months to one year after they had received an injection of BPC-157. They had to rely on their memory of what they felt months earlier. Moreover, there was no control, so knee pain can get better on its own. So without a control, it's impossible to say whether that improvement was due to BPC-157 or not. And finally, the study was tiny, just 16 people involved. So this study doesn't help to advance our understanding very much. To continue to explore the effects of BPC-157 in humans, we need randomized controlled trials. Claims like this one, posted on a blog on a medical clinic's website, are simply not supported by evidence that we currently have. But people are already using BPC-157. You can buy it online, and as we've already noted, you'll hear lots of stories about how it helped people. So how should we approach this? Does it make sense to use it anyway and see what happens? Well, there are some things to consider. First of all, there's a problem with relying on anecdotes about what has worked for other people. Why? Well, because we can never be sure about what's actually going on. Suppose that I get a cold, and someone tells me about a new miracle cure, which is drinking tarragon tea. I drink tarragon tea, and then I get over my cold, and it seems like I got over my cold a bit quicker than usual. But did I? Or if I did, was this due to the placebo effect because I believed that the tarragon tea would help? We just have no idea, and if enough people try something, no matter what it is, some of them will experience a benefit, and they'll post about it on social media. But without a controlled trial, we can't separate what works and what doesn't. In a clinical trial, we have two groups of people. One group gets a certain treatment, and the other one doesn't, and we try and keep everything else the same. And we control for the placebo effect, not by telling the participants, which group they are in. Then we can carefully measure the results and we can see clearly whether the treatment made any significant difference. Without that, we're just guessing. But you might be thinking, even if BPC-157 doesn't do anything, what do I have to lose? Why don't I just try it and see what happens? Well, there are three strong reasons for caution here. First, we don't know if it's safe. Since there have been no human clinical trials, we don't know whether we're harming ourselves by using this substance. And even if it is safe at a certain dose, it might not be at a higher dose. But we've got no idea what that proper dose might be. Second, even if BPC-157 is safe, we don't know whether the specific product that we're buying is safe. BPC is not recognized as a medication or a supplement and it's not regulated. The reality is, without independent testing, you don't know what you're buying and you don't know what you're putting in your body. The third reason, and this applies specifically to athletes, the US Anti-Doping Agency has banned the use of BPC-157 in competitions. Their reasons align with what we've already gone through so far. We don't know if it's safe, it isn't approved for use in humans, and we don't have any clinical trials to show if it's effective or not. So while the initial research is exciting, we don't have the human data yet. If we use BPC-157 at this point, we're exposing ourselves to significant risks, and we don't know if there are any benefits. So if you know anyone who's been using or thinking about using BPC-157, please consider sharing this video with them. In contrast, there are supplements out there that are effective and are supported by great data. The evidence for one is so strong that the International Society of Sports Nutrition concluded that it's the most effective nutritional supplement currently available to athletes in terms of increasing high-intensity exercise capacity and lean body mass during training. It also helps with muscle recovery after exercise, and luckily for us, the initial safety concerns about the supplement have been disproven. The supplement I'm talking about is creatine monohydrate. Another supplement that's been extensively studied is betaine or trimethylglycine. Studies have found that it can significantly improve muscle performance and the quality of our workouts. So I personally take trimethylglycine daily and I included it in microvitamin. But just because I take a supplement does in no way mean that you should as well. And I brought up those two examples to highlight the fact that there are things that we can add to our routine that will increase our athletic performance. They've been studied, we know what they do, and we know that they're safe. We don't have to resort to untested supplements. BPC-157 isn't the only peptide that's gaining popularity. There are many others that you'll see mentioned by influencers in the health and fitness space. They are also claimed to boost repair and signal to our body to produce more growth hormone. But like BPC-157, these lack human clinical trials demonstrating their safety and effectiveness. They aren't approved substances for enhancing athletic performance. 
And there's one final peptide that we should talk about, GLP-1 medications, or glucagon-like peptide 1. You may know these medications by their brand names, such as Azempic, and this peptide has exploded in popularity over the past couple of years. Originally, it was created as a medication to help treat type 2 diabetes, but now it's best known for its weight loss effects. But there's a lot of misleading information out there about GLP-1 medications. So if you want to find out the true story and whether these medications are right for you, make sure to check out this next video here.